Hello everyone. Today, uh, just a short video on the Makita um, track saw and track saw adapter for the cordless Makita circular saw. So here we have uh, the Makita DHS 680 brushless uh, six and a half inch uh, cordless circular saw. And we have a Makita 1.4 meter guide rail. And also we have a guide rail adapter from Makita. Now, partly the reason for this video is showing you how all these three work together, but also the fact that the this is not the correct guide rail adapter to put this DHS 680 onto this track. So what I've had to do is find this guide rail adapter, which is for a different model, but I've had to adapt it. And this is because the correct adapter isn't available for this sort. And when it is, it's a lot of money. So I'll put a couple of pictures up to show you the difference between the two guide rail adapters and what the differences are. But the crux of it is this main plastic body with the thumb turns and the adjusters is exactly the same. The only way they differ is these two legs here that go into, whoa, there it goes wobbling again, uh, that go into the saw to fix it. So this part number here is a, I'm going to read this off a piece of paper, is a Makita part number 197462-2. And it's meant for the Makita saw HS660. Now, as I said, the other, the problem for this saw isn't available. So I've, I bought this on a punt thinking it's only a, it's only the length of these wings that's different. So what I've done is the the original leg was the same as this. So you've got one at the front and one at the rear. And what I've done, and I, again, I don't purport to be a welder, but I've got some bar material that I had already and I've welded it onto the end. So basically what I've done is extended what was this one into that one. This one has also got a little indent in it which when you push that into the base of the saw locates it and what i've had to do is make a slightly bigger one for the back by putting a screw in so i'll show you how that now slots into the saw so to make it easy i've turned the saw on its side so this is this has been locked off in um in it's just over the zero position but i'll come to that a bit later so both these are locked off and i'm just going to Place that into the saw base. Down it goes. So that then goes tight up to this locator pin here. And then I'm going to have to modify on the back. You can see where is it? Just there. So then all I have to do then is tighten down the thumb screws on the front, on the back and the front. And that is now at one with the saw. So it's got a couple of adjusters on it. You've got one at the back and one at the front and they adjust out any slack in the rail. So when that's on the rail, I've adjusted that now and that's nice and solid. So you can see, I don't know if you can just see there, you adjust the whole thing so that the blade just catches the side of that rubber sacrificial strip now when the saw is on and set up and all of the slack has been taken out with these bolts with these thumb turns it now slides really nicely up and down the track so there is a few uh, limitations um, obviously as i said i think in one of my previous videos this saw isn't the most accurate when it's locked off but it's still plenty good enough for some fine cuts um, this is only a 1.4 meter guide rail which was given to me by a friend which was very kind of him but I've, I've noticed a problem in that um, I, put, I put a mark on here so this is four foot from one end to the other so this would be you'd put this on if you were cutting a piece of board 
along its length you put that on the end and four foot would come to here now the issue is because this is only 1.4 meter guide rail and i can see why makita sell them in 1.5 so but when if i just find that mark there so if you can just see there's my four foot mark in there a pencil line there it is so when the saw would start to cut into the edge of the sheet this rear this rear adjuster is not in the track so it's it's very wobbly so obviously you couldn't cut, start cutting there you'd have to start cutting once it was in which is probably a good sort of couple of inches less so obviously the only issue there really is uh, you know, I'm going to have to bin this freebie or give it back to my kind friend and buy a proper 1.5 meter length which would if I roll that back to my four foot mark which is there um, I've got a tape measure here I've only got to if that guide rail was another 100 mil it would quite easily sit on that other guide there so let's take it out and uh, have a go with it so here we are just a small piece of uh, three quarter 19 mil ply uh, put the track sort of an inch in from the end let's see how it goes lovely super smooth so i think the limitations with this setup would would be plunge cutting when uh, you go to adjust the depth on this saw it all becomes a little bit loose so i think if you were to try to un undo that depth adjuster to drop the saw in i think you could end up with a bit of movement here which may end up biting into your rail and potentially not giving you the best cut and because uh, this uh, the main body of this guide rail adapter is the same for the this saw and the other saws and it, as i said it's only the the metal legs that differ it doesn't cause any problems you know when the saw that saws at its the, the depth is the blades at its maximum depth so you know there's no issues it's all made to to fit it doesn't bind anywhere nothing gets in the way everything works properly um so you can even see how the black plastic has been cut out around where that um, height adjuster knob would be. So I'm pretty pleased with that. It's gone fairly fairly well in terms of converting it to work with this this uh, saw guide, and I shall now be able to use that on my jobs, and hopefully it will help me to stop having to put great big sheets of ply across my table saw.